Hi, welcome to Service Innovation Class 3, Understanding Your Capabilities. What did you do last week though? We looked at service centers and try and find ways to um, understand how they're different from manufacturing sites. We looked at different forms of innovation and where it can occur. We looked at open innovation with Cheesborough and we looked at uh, the touch points according to Cheesborough. So what are we going to do this week? Understand why culture is important for service. I want you to be able to use the Matthew model. I'll introduce you to the hair talk model. And I want you to develop the customer value proposition on the supplier side. Important to be able to see how all these fit together. Um, so from today's class, you'll be able to understand the capabilities of the firm. Please take time to have a look at these two videos. Um, good videos to explain the differences between product firms and service firms. Why do you think culture is important? This is the OEM view of the world, um, but it's wrong. Service is not about turning employees into robots. This is an expensive mistake. The employee as a disposable tool is expensive. Employers hate it, employees hate it, the customers don't like it. So why do companies do it? I want you to think of this as the best service opportunity we've got. Somebody who can upsell, somebody who's got empathy with people. Somebody who understands what people want. So people are important here because this is what drives our business. Just look at this picture from GE. Another picture from GE. One's product, one's service. I want you to think about that and reflect upon the differences that you've seen. Matthew model. This will help us understand some of the differences. Service-based, the theory says, humanistically supporting customer client-based innovation. Emotional, combining product and delivery, service with minor goods. Service creates value with simple structures. What I see on the technology or product basis, we see technocracy supporting the product efficiency-based innovation, factual feature, based, separation of production and delivery, tangible goods with minor services, services are not valued, they are a cost with complex structures. Big difference really is, is that value and service mostly in the intangibles. Valerie Mathieu came up with this super matrix um, and it allows us to benchmark where we think we stand and where we would like to go to in terms of service. So just looking at it, we've got different companies in different places. My way I look at it is organizational intensity tactical because a competition does it. Culturally, because we just know that we do it that way. Strategic, because the top management tells us. Customer services, very basic line, so they can actually order basic services from us. Product as a service. So now we're extending things a little bit more, but very much focusing on the product and keeping the product functioning well. Service as a product, really just thinking about doing service for the sake of doing services. So really we want to move from tactical to cultural and either to product services or services a product. To move costs us effort. It's a problem. But there's a payback. When we think about this though, don't forget that there are different departmental cultures. This is looking at the firm, but as we go down, we'll have other people that will tell you it's not been invented here. We tried it before. So think about how to mix that. So let's have a look at the hair talk model. Improving technology transfer. Service centers are quite different from manufacturing centers. Often they're very small, 20 plus employees rather than 100, hundreds of employees. It's often where we sent underperformers. Weak IT systems could be in place. And we often have craft labor, apprentice-based employees, rather than graduates. And this creates a different culture. So what we've got to know is we've got to be able to move the know-how from A to B, from one person to the next person. This requires trust. People need to come together. So we need to bring people together. We need to understand that culture. The important thing is, is that the knowledge broker here is not a consultant. The benefit of the knowledge broker is somebody who can foster faster innovation, more duplication and therefore reduce risks. And do it in a non-provocative way. 
let's have a look at the customer value proposition from Osdeval. <clears throat> I always like to start with the customer jobs. But important here is to map out the firm. Normally I'd start with the customer side, but this time I want to start with the firm. What is it that we produce? What our capabilities are? What do we want to do? What is it we sell? What are the competencies that we have? Where are we located? First iteration is therefore to understand what it is we do and why we do it. So that's why I've got a picture of the value proposition there. It takes time. You need to keep up this inventory of what it is we've got because this is really the core stuff that we make money from later. Classwork. I want you to do this for the bike service centre in Lutzen. Very straightforward. See where you think they fit. Okay. Do you understand why culture is important? I think in the discussions it's been clear many of you actually understand and can feel that cultural difference. You've seen the Mathieu model, I want you to try and use it. Hertog's model of a knowledge broker is very, very important in services. And I want you to be able to write down effectively what you think the supplier side of the value proposition is. Remembering that this is the first iteration, this is what you think you do. Later on you can come back and you can re-sculpt re, 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 re it. Now you clearly dis describe the culture of the firm, its ability to share know-how and describe what services it thinks it provides. Thanks.